Good afternoon. Today is May 24th, 2022. We're looking at a 2000 tick chart for the E-mini S&P 500 futures market. We have a 21 EMA here in blue, 9 EMA here in cyan, and 200 EMA here in magenta. We additionally have a MACD indicator down here at the bottom, but we primarily use technical analysis, price action, overall market context in order to place our trades. Take a second real quick, like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so you know exactly when I post this content. And let's get right into it for today. Today, you know, another very difficult day. Throughout the day, we had breaks to new extremes, prices would chop a bit a lot of stems especially in the morning but let's go ahead and just get right into it for today and we'll spot some of the trades that i saw set up as we normally do on this channel we mark our level of resistance down here up here at the overnight highs and a level of support down here at the overnight lows and right now i guess would be a good time to mention as soon as the market opened we had a huge gap here at play prices were trending below this 200 ema as the market opened here so my bias really was short as i fast forward a little bit here we have a new high up here as prices come down first entry long prices come down second entry long if there's a trigger above this bar and as the next bar prints i'm placing my entry order one tick below this signal bar right here now at the time i had a trading range that kind of looked like this i did mark it a little bit aggressive because the macd was slowly starting to lose a, a little bit of momentum but with the way prices were pushing across this 21 EMA, 9 EMA crossed over this 21 EMA, I felt confident about that trade. I ended up getting into this trade, and then as prices started to chop around just a little bit, I skunked out. And I did lose a little bit of money here, but the trade ended up working out. But as you can see, as prices continue to print, we get a lot of stems both to the top side and bottom side of all these candles. Eventually, as prices made their way down here, I started to see, okay, we could potentially have a two-tier trading range. That's when I got rid of that trading range, and I just extended the one that we had here short-term trend moving up break move to a new high lower high but we didn't get a close below this 21 ema that could have been a potential trade you take you have plenty of room down here to the lows now if i move these channels for just a second this is kind of what i'm looking at at the time we have a new high up here as prices come down first entry long prices continue down potential second entry long if there's a trigger above this bar here prices came up and i had my entry order in place ready to go short two dojis prices continue to print we don't get a close above this nine EMA so I'm keeping my entry order there and I was hesitant about keeping it in because I did see a little bit of a loss in momentum here in the MACD but then it started to pick up again as this big bar was was forming so it was relatively last second I kept my trade in there we had just enough room to the lows I got into that trade and out for a scalp very quickly now dragging this channel back in play that's the channel that I initially had as prices continued down then we had a break of this channel right here and prices were just chopping back and forth for a bit very hard to trade this MACD is additionally thinning out before prices continue pushing lower now when that happens that's when I started trying to find a bigger channel in play here we traded down into this trading range here so we're most likely going to trade down and out of the trading range but it was very hard to spot any setup here i there was no way for me to catch this move really where prices come off the 21 ema you can count this as a new highs prices come down first entry long prices continue down looking for a potential second entry long to trigger above this bar very small you wouldn't be risking a lot i can't remember exactly how this bar formed i almost think prices went down first and then came back up that's when i had an entry order in place but then as i started to kind of look at it i'm like prices are kind of chopping up a little bit macd is fairly thin we could be migrating into bullish momentum right around this area and so i was like i'm just gonna pull my order i'm not gonna take any trade there once you get enough bars that are stacked enough you're pulling your trade anyway additionally you have this signal bar that closed at or above this nine ema so that's even more reason take your trade out you don't want to take a risk there prices continue to push down there is some fairly nice separation between the 21 and 9 ema with the behavior of how prices were working up here in these congested areas with all these stems and stuff I was waiting for that to happen again and as prices continue to get extended I was hesitant about taking any trade here we reset the count up here and as prices come down first entry long second entry long if there's a trigger above this bar and there is barely when I saw this doji though I was just like ah we could potentially lead into some consolidation here I also wasn't I wasn't really a big fan of how the MACD was looking we do have bearish momentum but with this doji bar printing we were getting slight loss of momentum I was just hesitant to take a trade like this there's just something about trading these mornings I it was you know trading today and yesterday they're they're difficult days to trade it wasn't as clean as we like them to be prices come down you would have been in this trade if you took it there 
and then prices would have consolidated a little bit before coming back up. You know, hindsight's always 2020. In the moment, it might have been hard to see. So if you're trying to catch stops this low, I mean, I'm not going to be upset or about that or anything. It's it's a tough loss, but based on market behavior, I just I wasn't I just wasn't a fan of taking something there. We have the short-term trend that's moving up, break, looking for a new high. I was actually looking to possibly take a second entry short off the 21 EMA, but MACD is showing a lot of bullish pressure here, so I'm anticipating prices are going to push up above EMA. And they do here. We have the short-term trend with a break move to a new high, and as prices come down, I'm looking to potentially take a lower high to go short, and that's exactly what I get. At the time, I didn't have this I didn't have this range here. So really looking at this channel, we have a break looking to make a new low. While we do have bullish momentum, we are losing that momentum. So and I entered a lower high after the second entry short played out and I was in and out for a trade. I did have to wait a little bit, but I did manage to get that scalp. And again, the behavior of the day has been very weird where you get these breaks and then moments of consolidation. So as soon as I got this swing here, that's when I started drawing in this range. And we get these nasty overlapping bars, 21 EMA, 9 EMA are flattening out. I had to step away from the computer around here. Really just no way to trade any of this. So now there are two trades that I mark here. What I was seeing is we had a break of this trend consolidated for a little bit. We were looking to make a new low. And so we do get a new low off of this bar right here, but we also have a potential failed second entry long. And so if you look up here, we have this new swing high prices come down and up for a first entry long. Then as prices come back down and up second entry long triggers, your entry is going one tick below this signal bar here, and you'd go short for a scalp. Now, if you're choosing not to count here and you're choosing to reset the count right here, prices come down and up first entry long, come down and up for a second entry long that fails, you're entering one tick below this bar right here. And if you're going for six ticks, you would have just been out for a scalp. But I did mark it aggressive because we had the break of this channel move to a new low. At this point, we really want to see how prices are going to react here at EMA. If you entered on this first bar, you would have been good if you're going for two points but again also aggressive because this downtrend has played out so after this downtrend has played out we need to be cautious about taking any shorts there is a second entry short that triggers here we have this new low with the first entry short second entry short but hesitant to go short even taking a lower high which presents itself right here if you're trying to go short below this bar but we have a MACD crossover we're changing from this bearish momentum up to bullish momentum I'm really anticipating for prices to push back above EMA I'm hesitant about going short in this area not to mention you also have bars that are starting to overlap again this trend that we've been seeing the past 48 hours just nasty stuff to trade you want to stay out of that but then prices push above EMA as anticipated really thought prices were going to make their way up to the 200 EMA at least I was looking for long opportunities but I didn't see anything here and before I could even think about taking any trades I started to see more overlapping bars 21 and 9 EMA are thinning out it's chop city it's just it's annoying sitting through all of this you know you have prices that are oscillating up and down you have the short-term trend that's working up here with a break looking for a new high making it up to the top of this trading range that we're in we have a new swing up here as prices come down first entry long then prices come back second entry long above this bar if it triggers we have shorts that are getting trapped prices reverse bullish macd is showing bullish momentum too I couldn't be upset with you if you ended up taking a long on this one, for example. If you went long there, you would have been in this trade, and then prices would have reversed on you, and you probably maybe would have gotten stopped out, depending on what your stop loss strategy is. But that could be a potential trade you take too. You just have to go through the sweat of sitting through this nasty bearish bar. You are going long in the middle of the range, but price action does work the way you want it to. I didn't see it in the moment, so that's why I didn't have anything marked. But when I go back and look at it, yeah, you could potentially take an aggressive trade there. Unfortunately, you're just you're you're dealing with congestion again in this area and as prices continue to congest you're getting the same thing here you have this new high first entry long second entry long if there's a trigger above this bar i don't even want to talk about any of these trades yes the trade would have worked but this is just all dangerous stuff to trade in macd is losing momentum you see how thin it is we're not getting clean oscillations that we want to it's just a clear indicator stay out of this stuff don't even try trading this stuff it's just it's not good you want to wait till we get breakouts and prices are trending 9 ema and 21 there is that separation restarting the count here prices come up and down for a first entry short prices come up down for a second entry short if there's a trigger below this bar as soon as prices trigger that second entry short people are trying to go short in this uptrend as the 9 EMA crossing over the 200 EMA 21 is also making their way there where do we anticipate prices to go back to the top of this support level for these overnight lows the order would have triggered you would have been in this trade before prices push up and you've been out for a scalp now unfortunately the way this plays out if you 
you enter at 950 up to 150, that's two points before prices reverse, stop out the runner, and then goes exactly where you think they're going to go. So it's unfortunate, but that was actually the last trade that I took for the day. I did stick around for a little bit here. I saw another potential trade set up. Again, we get this break of this trend, a lot of consolidation and nastiness. We don't like this. But then once prices start to trend again, we get a change in momentum as the MACD is starting to cross over. Depending on where you start the count, you'd either be in this trade or not. That's kind of why I marked it as aggressive. Because if you're counting from this swing low here, prices come up and down for a first entry short. Prices come up and down for a second entry short that triggers. Your entry order is going one tick above this doji bar. You'd have to wait for just a little bit before prices give you that pop, and then you would have been in and out for the trade. But it really depends on how you're counting and where you're starting that count from. I marked it, but I didn't trade it. I was resetting the count here as prices were coming off the 21 EMA, so that was technically a first entry short, and that's just the way I saw it. Now, I really wasn't satisfied with the morning. I should actually probably draw some sort of channel here. Now, I, I really wasn't satisfied with the morning. I just, you know, I stayed past 1030. I was trying to find another trade. I saw prices push down below EMA. I was waiting for the 9 EMA to cross over the 21 EMA. Again, overlapping bars, consolidation, hard to trade any of this. And then fast forward. I initially started the started the count from where prices were coming off this 21 EMA. So prices came down and up for a first entry long. And as prices came down and up for a second entry long, I didn't want to put my entry order one tick below the signal bar because I would be going short directly into this 200 EMA that's coming up. So I skipped out on this trade. It's an aggressive trade, but I, I didn't end up taking it. Once prices pushed below this 200 EMA, I rethought about where the count was. So I started the count off this swing high, this lower swing high. Prices came down for a first First entry long, then prices came down second entry long if there's a trigger below this bearish bar. And there was by one tick. As prices reversed, I was in for this trade and I really had to wait it out just a second before I started to see MACD lose momentum and I pulled my trade out. I skunked it. I just didn't like how that was setting up. Prices continue to oscillate a bit. And once I skunked out of that trade, I really was done for the day. I just really didn't like how, how the market was playing out. But to be honest, you're just, you're going to get days like that. It's not always going to be as crisp as you want it to be. But if you're in this trading game for the long run, you have to just take those days. It comes with the territory. There's going to be better days. There's going to be better opportunities. What matters is risk management, minimizing those losses, maximizing those winners. That's what it's all about. So we finished today as is. Tomorrow's a new trading day and I'm looking forward to it. That's going to be it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. You know, just like you, I wish today was a cleaner day. I wish we had cleaner setups, um, but we unfortunately didn't get that. So thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.